Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to day 21 of Vlogmas. So today I'm going to be looking more into the future and that is my 2020, oh my goodness, nearly 2020, my 2020 challenges that I want to challenge myself to read. Um, I have decided this year to actively to participate in the Reading Women's Challenge. I've always remembered it last minute. Oh, this is a t-shirt by the way. So reclaim half the bookshelf, Reading Women. Um, but I've always remembered it like at the last minute and it's always been something I've been disappointed by because I've never like fully prepared and I really just want to read amazing, amazing books um, written by women and that just just blow my mind away. So I haven't obviously, it's a year challenge. They've got a lot of questions. Uh, let me check. I did have them here. Um, they are, there's like 24 challenges for the year. So it's like two books a month and then they have two bonus ones. So what I'm going to do is the ones that I have already selected. I've gone through the uh, challenge. I printed it out because I'm going to be fully committed in black and white to this challenge and um, I want to do it throughout the year so I'll be on my Instagram I'll be posting hashtag reading women's challenge posts for once I complete the book hopefully I can get to all 24 I think there's a bonus for reading books by Toni Morrison and Isabel Allende which is great because I haven't read either of those authors but the main challenge is to read books about women or by women predominantly by women um, just to you know, raise greater awareness for a greater intersectionality within women writers as well and within the wider readership. So starting off, I am going with challenge number two, which is to read a book translated from Asian language. And that is none other than Out by Natsuo Kurino, um, Kirino, sorry, Natsuo Kirino. Um, and this one is a murder mystery, which is warms the cockles of my heart. Um, but it's quite a chunky one and it's really freaky apparently. It's just like what women will do to outcast another. And it's just kind of shows you the brutality that is inherent within everyone because you can't just say, you can't stereotype human beings. So it's going to be wonderfully challenging. And I think this this sounds so scary. I think it's going to be one of those great murder mystery reads that just completely changes my outset and mind look. But it's translated from Japanese and it's this book series, so this is an illustrated cover, has been illustrated by Yuko Shimizu, who I absolutely love. I'll leave her link down below. And it's part of the vintage series, Japanese, vintage classic Japanese series, which are beautiful as well. So, but this is out which is fantastic. It's a fantastic title and I can't wait to read it. Challenge number four is to read a picture book that has been illustrated or written by black, indigenous or people of colour. And I really want to read Maxine Benavid Clark's Patchwork Bike. I read that, it was, I think that was part of her, um, her um, short story, um, Foreign Soil, which she adapted for a picture book, which looks beautiful. I'm waiting for my copy to come in from the library. Thankfully, that'll be next year too. And I also want to read the other one by her, which is Fashionista, which looks beautiful as well. I just love the way Maxine Benneber Clark can really capture the essence of a story so simply and so deftly. She's also a poet, so her use of language is stunning. If you don't know who Maxine Benneber Clark is and you want to read her non picture books, Foreign Soil and The Hate Race are brilliant. I haven't read her poetry collection, but I really, really want to get my hands on it. But yeah, so I just can't wait to get into more Maxine Benneber Clark. Challenge number five was not hard at all because it's to read a winner of the Stella Prize. And the Stella Prize is a Australian literary prize to celebrate women's fiction, well, even women's non-fiction actually, women's writing in Australia. And I've had this one on my shelf. It's called The Forgotten Rebels of Eureka by Claire Wright. Now, Claire Wright wrote The Daughters, uh, New Daughters of Freedom, which is about the female suffrage movement, not only in Australia, but also the women who then went overseas to help promote female suffrage around the world. But The Forgotten Re Rebels of Eureka if you're not sure of Australian history, the Eureka Stockade was something huge that happened in um, the Gold Rush era in 1860s. And um, the, the stockade itself was basically when all these 
um, miners rebelled against all the corruption that was happening at the time and um, they created the Eureka Stockade. Think of like a barricade or something that started up like, you know, Les Mis or something. But um, yeah, so the Forgotten Rebels of Eureka is about the women who were there because all the history on the Eureka Stockade, of course, is about all the miners, all the men. But there were so many women who were there supporting the movement, supporting the, the miners and also supporting it's just mind-boggling how much female history is just erased through this idea that they're not their presence wasn't a you know like a force to be reckoned with or their presence wasn't really necessary for the action and Claire Wright clearly proves it was so she won the Stella Prize in 2014 for this amazing book I've had it on my shelf ever since I read You Daughters of Freedom and loved it so I really wanted to read her earlier work as well. Challenge number six once again was not hard and it was to find a non-fiction book written by a female historian and I've chosen Anna Funda Stasiland. I loved, loved Anna Funda's All That I Am which is it's almost historically accurate. She's taken these historical figures that she didn't have the true st a full story of and created a fictional story around the facts that she had so it's so close to reality for so many people it's just heartbreakingly beautiful but Stasiland is about her own time when she went to eastern Germany to interview people after the fall of the Berlin Wall and she just captured so much history that was lost because obviously much of what was Eastern Germany was just washed away once the wall fell and no one really wanted to like view it anymore they wanted to just move past it into a you know a distant you know potential future so she managed to cap get this wonderful window of opportunity and she just grasped it and she just it's just an amazing piece of writing just to understand what life was like for many people living in Eastern Germany now challenge number seven is uh, to read a book about Afrofuturism and um, that was not hard since I've already read the first in the Broken Earth series by Anne K. Jemison. I'm going to be reading book two which is The Obelisk Gate. All three are out, all three have won the Hugo Award. Book one I absolutely adored, it blew my brain with how ridiculously amazing it was. The voices of the three women in that was so horrendously fantastic that I I st I'm still shocked at how brilliant that book was. Um, I shouldn't be because she's a fantastic writer, but it's just, you know, when something hits you so personally and you just cannot believe that you're reading something so amazing. So I can't wait to get into the rest of the series just to finish it off and just to see where she takes the story. Because if she's won managed to win the Hugo, not once, but three times for the entire trilogy, that is saying something especially for sci-fi, especially because sci-fi is such a neglected genre where women write. There's, there are female writers, but they're not seen to be the most popular big sellers. So I cannot wait to finish this trilogy, and it's definitely going to contribute to my Reading Women's Challenge. All right, so only a really short TBR, um, because at the moment, like I said, they're the books that initially, straight off the bat, I know that I want to read next year for the Reading Women's Challenge. And ultimately, I'm going to be trying to read as much as I possibly can for those 24 challenges from my current bookshelves because I know I will probably have enough books to cover all of those challenges. So I will leave all the information down below if you want to have a look at the challenges. And I'll see you all tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 22. Bye.